Hey everyone, greetings from Painted Studio here in Brookfield, Illinois. I'm Maury Dunbar. I am the guest retailer here on APS uh, Artistic Painting Studio's Facebook page. Um, just so everybody knows, my website is www.paintedstudio.com. Um, it is a little bit chaotic. We are in Illinois. I'm going to shift my camera a little bit because everything wants to flop down today. Uh, we go on lockdown today at five o'clock. So what better day to present kits for things to do when you're on lockdown? Um, today our tile, our, our project is a tile kit and we're going to have some fun. We're going to work with some products. You're going to show you some stencils and I'm going to tell you how to get a kit. Okay. So again, Hey Rima, nice to see you. I'm Mind you, I'm on a table and my tripod shifts for those of you who have never seen a live that I've done before. So if I do something on the table, this is gonna happen. And I can't help it, it just is what it is. So fair warning, it look, it'll look like an earthquake. This is Illinois, we really don't get those here. Um, so today's project is a tile kit and we will be working with Jennifer's brand new liquid glass um, high gloss two-part epoxy. Now this is new. I have never used this. It just came to me in my shipping yesterday. So we're going to be able to use it here for the live. And I will be carrying this product as will many of Jennifer's retailers. And if you're not familiar with how to find an artistic painting studio retailer, go to the page, scroll down, there is a retailer search, so you just enter your zip code or enter your state and it'll pop up the people who are around you. So just because I'm here in Chicago, if you're in California, you can order from Jennifer. If you're on the East Coast, there are other people. If you're down South, there's other people. But of course, I'm, I'm the best. I'm fabulous. And if Jennifer's watching, she's laughing her butt off right now with me saying that. So let's move on to the projects. I'm gonna turn the camera down and we're gonna talk about what we're doing. Actually, give me just a second. I'm gonna show you where we're going first. Uh, I didn't bring this over to the table, so I think this might be smarter. This is what the tile kit is, okay? We, this is a six by 18 tile. These, I use these on the floor in the studio here. I had a ton of them left over, so I thought, well, what am I gonna do with them? So I'm gonna make tiles, kits. What these are is it's floor tile that we've put product on and created a food safe surface. So you can serve cheese and crackers, fresh fruit, cut up meats, anything you want. You can also use it as a candle tray or anything else because it's got epoxy on it, which makes it food safe. So the first thing that we do is we take one of our floor tiles and it doesn't matter what color they are. So I prepped this one already with black set coat. Uh, it's a Faux FX product. Faux FX is a, a decorative painting company that makes one of the best um, paints for bonding. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back a step because it's been a little cuckoo here and I'm forgetting my own steps. So give me a sec, here we reach a product. And I'll grab a tile. Hang on a sec. Oh. Sorry about that. With the chaos that's going on around me right now, we have the studio completely torn up. We're reorganizing. I, I don't always have everything pulled together, but that's nothing new for those who know me. All right. So this is what the, the basic tile looks like. You can use any tile, any pattern, any anything. Um, this one is not super shiny because it's to have that wood grain finish. And the first thing that we did after we cleaned it off, and we cleaned it well because it's been sitting around here and they're dirty, so make sure you wash it. Then you're going to put on a coat of Prime Etch. Faux effects Prime Etch is a high bonding, transparent, very liquidy, let me see if you can see it from the very liquidy primer that is designed to bond to hard to bond surfaces specifically for micas and tile and glass. So we had primed this with one coat of Prime Etch. 
right out of the container, not thin down with anything, and we let it dry for 24 to 48 hours. You can let it dry as long as you want to. It just needs a minimum of 24 hours. Then, after it dried, we painted it black with faux effects. Yes, you can add wood you bend around the trim, Rima. I just don't have any here in the studio. I used all the ones I got from you on another project. Okay, so I painted this with black set coat so that it is completely one solid color. Um, and I did another one because we're going to be working on a couple things just to, as things dry back and forth. I had, happened to have a square one that was white. I painted it with a uh, gravel gray set coat. So those things are all done. They're primed. Everything's done. And we're ready to move to the next step. So I'm going to flip the camera down and we're going to talk. See if you can see me. We have goo on the table. I mean, we have just been absolutely nutso around here today. We have redone our back room. We've done all kinds of things. And I am um, don't have my my iPad open because we've got so much stuff on the table. So if I miss one of your questions, I will come back. I will scroll through. I will answer. And hi to everybody, David, Kara. Nice to see you here. Okay, so I primed this one gray because I have ideas for it, but I wanted to use one of our new products, which is called uh, Ultra Vivid Metallic Multi-Surface uh, Acrylic Medium, meaning it's gloss enamel paint. So I love these products. This is from a different company. It's uh, from, um, uh, Jesus, I got I forgot what the company was, Color Art Products. And... I love how they brush on. I love that they're so rich in color. But being an acrylic medium, <clears throat> they can be a little transparent. And I knew that. So I needed to put, instead of putting straight pink on a white tile, which I knew would be streaky for several coats, um, I did a, a, a primer coat on here, the gray set coat over... Uh, faux effects prime match just to make sure that I would get a better coverage with color and I'm going to use one of my brushes preferably I've been working with messy brushes all day because all the nice ones are shoved somewhere it comes with a cap you can squirt some out you can squirt it on a plate and dip into it um, I usually start with the glob in the center of something and then I brush out from the center and you can see as I'm brushing it on it is translucent, so I'm gonna see some of the gray under here. Now, mind you, again, I'm just creating a base color for my project. So if my coverage isn't perfect, if it isn't flawless, that's not doesn't matter. I just need to have a base color um, for what we're gonna lay over it. Gosh, this is pretty over this gray. It's gorgeous, it's called Playful Peony, it's this color. And it's really, and I know you're looking, why is she brushing in all those different directions? Well, right now I'm just moving my paint across the surface. Um, I also have my very tall assistant floating around here. Tor, mm -hmm. come here for a sec, kiddo. Oop. My very tall assistant is here with me. So as soon as this is finished brushing, I'm gonna ask. Whoa, I'm sorry. Sorry, I dropped the phone. I'm gonna ask that guy to help me and take stuff away. Sorry for the phone drop. I can't, obviously it doesn't want to drop. I mean, it doesn't want to just flip around the way I need it to. Hi, Jennifer, nice to see you there. Okay, so Monk, when I finish brushing this out, will you please put this into the hot box? Of course. Again, I know I'm getting a very uneven coating here. This is a acrylic translucent metallic paint it's just got a pretty color and i wanted this as the background for what we're going to do uh, i'm not trying for even i'm just trying to get to the edges because every time i flip off up here i kind of push the paint off the edge of the surface it's a different paint than most of what i used usually work with which are much higher opacity okay kid come here you take that and put it in, and then take that and throw it in the sink, please. Right. Thank you. Oh. It's so nice to have an assistant in the studio today. Woo! 
get so much more done when I can hand off stuff and I don't have to stand up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this black one that I've already painted. Oh, Jennifer is taking a break from taking, taping her own videos. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use Artsyville foil adhesive on the tile. If I pull it right out of this container, it's thick. So my options are I can roll it on and leave it a little thicker and it'll have a little bit of a texture or I can pour it off into another jar, which I do regularly and thin it a little bit with about 10% water. Not any more than that, because if you thin it too much, it stops being a quality adhesive, and that's a kind of a sad and a waste of time. So I'm gonna wipe off my uh, very wet paintbrush right here, and I'm gonna dip it into my foil adhesive. Stir up the bottom. Ooh, I'm getting down to last in here. I'm gonna have to redo this jar. And I'm just gonna brush the entire surface first, not worrying about directions, I just want coverage. And you see, it's gotten a little thick, so I'm having to really stretch it. I'm gonna have to work it a little bit across the surface. Hey, kiddo. Yeah? Would you bring me a, spray, a water spray bottle from the back? Uh, yes. No. As this is kind of thick and I'm not really loving the way it's going, I'm going to use a water spray mister. I'm going to test my mist to the side and then I'm going to spritz, use this and spritz lightly on the surface just once. And that just dampened it enough for me to be able to move it around a little bit. almost like I created a slip coat with the water that allows this product to slip around a little easier. I'm gonna spray right there. So I got more than enough adhesive on here. I just have to move it to where it's too thin. And you can see, I'm not putting my brush down in the middle like this. I don't want those brushy marks. Those will likely show in the end if I'm sloppy like that. So I am taking my product and completely stretching it across the surface. All right, I'm gonna have my son take the other, this back and move it into the heater, heat hot box. And I think the pink one's probably dry enough for me to put adhesive on it. And make sure I get that edge. Okay, would you put that in the hot box and bring me the pink tile? Of course, uh, we're learning the uh, pink paintbrush. You just wanted to toss that in the sink. Yeah. Got it. My son is a very conscientious assistant, so he will ask me questions to make sure he's doing the right thing. Um, Jennifer says, keep the water down to be down around to 5%. 10% is a little too much water, and it can com compromise the adhesive. Um, I only go 10% when it's really thick. Most of the time I don't need to do it that much, but uh, I have found that when it gets really thick, about 10% with the water is the only thing that works. Um, but take Jennifer's advice over mine. It's her product and she knows it better. All right, thank you, hun. Welcome. Okay, so we have hot box in the back. I'm seeing if this paint is dry and it is not even close to dry. Well, gonna have to wait for a few minutes for some paint to dry. Will you put this please back into the uh, hot box because it's not dry? Of course. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for a second. We're gonna wait for one, the paint to dry or the adhesive to set up. And I have a heater box in the back. Um, foil adhesive wants to dry. Our, the Artsyville foil adhesive wants to dry for a minimum of an hour. It will dry clear and be tacky in 15 minutes. The reason you want to dry for an hour is that you want the, the tack to firm up. If it's not firm enough and you put foil over it, even if it looks like it's ready to go, you can actually put the foil on and rip not just the adhesive off, you can rip the paint off because the adhesive might be better bonded to the paint than to your foil. I've done that. So you wanna wait uh, for a good hour. In our hot box, I can go in there for 10, 15 minutes, plus we're pushing it for demos. Um, 
but about 15 minutes at the most in my hot box is about an hour's worth of drying time. So if I leave something in there all day, uh, I basically cured it for a week. Uh, were you seeing any, is the black tile clear or is it still got white on it? Um, next thing we're gonna talk about too is what foils we're going to use and in a kit, I said, well, I'm putting this kit together. So in the kit, you receive a tile, some prime match, some set coat. You're going to have one of our gorgeous 9.99 stencils or 9.95 stencils. These are the ones that are available. You will not receive the more expensive ones in the kits. So you can receive flower power. Um, let's see if I can read these upside down to see which ones they are. And this one is unnamed uh, in my uh, tech. This is the textile print. This is the Indian textile. This one is Maya Rose. This one is branching out. This one is Elizabeth's Lace. And this one is what I think this is. I can never remember the names of anything. I'm, I'm lucky I remember the name of my kid. Uh, this is some sort of trellis one that doesn't actually have the name on it for once. There's this one. There is our tiger are paisley and there was one more that I don't happen to have one in a stack right here so if you order a kit you will receive the tile you will receive a stencil uh, if you don't make a notation in the box when you order what stent uh, which of the 995 stencils you want um, I'm gonna pick it for you uh, you can then also at that point choose your foil patterns and your glitter colors or you can choose um, a color palette and I will put it all together for you. They are available under gifts to go uh, on our Facebook, I'm uh, sorry, on my business page, uh, my website, paintedstudio.com. Um, they are not some of the stencils you might be familiar with from Jennifer. Jennifer's are um, a, little, a little heavier cut, a little nicer material, so they were a little more expensive and those aren't going in those boxes. And then you will also receive uh, foil adhesive and some epoxy. And right today, we're gonna to be using Jennifer's brand new uh, two-part liquid glass liquid epoxy. Now this does cure just like the ones that I normally, I normally carry art resin. This one cures food safe, it cures crystal clear, it's gorgeous stuff. It's my first time playing with it, so we will be working with that today. Monk, is there, is the... There's still some white streaks, but it's mostly cleared up at this point. Okay, what about the pink tile? Is that still sticky? Uh, check. Uh, it doesn't feel it. Okay, would you bring me a pink tile, please? Of course. We're just trying to keep things moving along here. <laughs> I right, Jennifer, go back to your filming. I'm so glad to see everybody here. It's a busy, busy Saturday for everybody. So I appreciate your time. All right, so we've got our pink tile back. It's dry enough now for me to put some foil adhesive on. And you've seen me apply this for the black one. It's not a surprise. It's gonna go on exactly the same way. I've got very, very, very thick, sticky foil adhesive in here. And I think I may have to pour some work straight out of the can and then just missed the surface because I've actually used all of that up now. All right, so like I was saying before, it's a thick product. It does not self-level. So the manner that you apply it is important. Okay. So is getting the hair out of it. So you wanna get it on you want to stretch it across the surface. And I try to apply as thin a coat as possible. And it's not always easy because this is, a, like I said, this is thick. 
So I'm gonna stretch my product out and I'm pulling it across the surface as much as possible because if I get it too thick, the ridges stay there. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Rima. I'm about due for a manicure and I'm gonna be teaching myself how to do my own nails this week. Cause you know, like everything else, nail salons are closed. So I have, I have all the tools. Now I'm gonna just practice on myself. get this on and I know why am I doing patterns because it helps me smear more material across an entire surface sort of like when we paint walls you don't just start in one corner and paint straight up and down you have to put the uh, material on move it around and then smooth it out okay let's get this Now, if we have pullback and stuff today, it's because we are forcing the dry time with the hot box. Um, and people always ask me this, what's a hot box? Um, as a teacher, I had many studios had a hot room because we're doing finishes and we're forcing things to dry faster so we can get more layers on them so they can complete the class. Um, I did not have space for a whole room to be heated up like that. So I built a heating box out of a hydroponic tent and a space heater and some venting so that I have a warm space to speed my drying time. Um, there we go. Okay, would you throw that in the sink? And nice. this can go into the hot box. And I just left a nice big brush mark right there, which I didn't mean to do. Oh, well, I'm smoothing out with my finger. So I put my fingerprints in here. God only knows that I can. Now you could be able to know who I am because I put my fingerprint on the tile. And I'll foil a thumbprint in there or something. Oh, David, thank you. I'm glad you want to buy my kit and my stencils. Thank you very much. The website is paintedstudio.com. The kits are under gifts to go. Or on the search bar, just put tile kit or birdhouse kit or Easter egg kit and the kits will show up. Tor, would you bring me the black tile, please? My son is, God, it's nice to have an assistant for a change. I don't have to get up and run around. Uh, yeah, the kits are not, Rima, the kits aren't at, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading it on an angle. You're, I thought you were saying they were at Jennifer's website. Unfortunately, the, the kits are on my website, but no, I can read you gave him the right website. So now we have this tile, and we're going to be fairly sticky on this one just because we pushed it. Uh, and I'm going to pick, let's see, what tile do I want to, what, what stencil do I want to use? for this. I think I wanted to save the flower power one for the other one. Um, let's have some fun. Let's do tiger. How does everybody feel about tigers? So, all right, we're going to do that. We're just going to start on one edge. And because this is sticky, I don't have to worry about any adhesive on here. And I'm going to take, I think I'll take my blue foil. This is available. This is, I think this is called, on my website, it's called Bright Blue or Cobalt Blue or Royal Blue. Don't ask me. Let me see if we put the, it is called Rich Blue. We got smart at one point. We put labels on the inside of the cores because I could not remember the names of any of the foils. And I kept losing the uh, piece of tape that I'd write it on and then tape to the, <laughs> tape to the roll. So my much smarter friends who were school teachers came in and said, you need to not do this the dumb way. Stop making your own life so hard. So I'm gonna take my roll back up so nothing rolls away. And I've got this beautiful blue. Now on these rolls where you see a silver edge with the foil, take a minute, trim that foil edge off because if you lay that down, you'll get silver. You won't get blue, you'll get silver. Trim the blue, the silver edge off. 
Now for those, I, I know most of you are probably familiar with foils from seeing Jennifer's products. Foils were originally designed for hot stamping, meaning that if you ever saw a novel that had a, a bright metallic shiny gun or a drop of blue, a blood on the front, it was red metallic, it was heat stamped onto the paper using these kind of foils. Well, as creative folks, we wanted to use the foils and we couldn't use heat on various surfaces, so we used um, adhesive. And that's why Jennifer's adhesive is so amazing. The Artsyville foil adhesive releases even the hardest to release foils. Um, so this is a wonderful one to work with. And I'm gonna take a toothbrush I'm gonna smooth it with my fingers so I can feel where everything is. And I'm gonna take my toothbrush. And trust me, a toothbrush is a pain on a large surface, but on a small surface like this where I'm trying to get into a small pad, detailed pattern on a stencil, the toothbrush is ideal. And these are dollar store toothbrushes. Um, for hard, a hard toothbrush. You can't get hard toothbrushes really anymore in regular drugstores, but the dollar store always seems to have them. And you want a firmer toothbrush than just a soft toothbrush to kind of get into the edges of the stencil. So I scrub that and I'm gonna pull it back. I check my release because I can see right here I've missed a spot and I missed a couple spots on the edge. Just missed a spot down there. Another one here. And I think I got everything up there. Now you're gonna see these funny marks here that the stencil doesn't always completely get to a certain spot. These are actually what's called registration marks and they allow you to move this and place the stencil so that you have a continuous and uh, lined up pattern for want of a better way of saying that. All right, so now I'm just gonna peel this off of here. And yeah, the adhesive is still really fresh, so it's pulling, my stencil's really sticking to it. And I gotta be careful, I may be pulling off paint. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull off a little paint over here. And that was what I was afraid of. We've pushed this pretty hard, but we're gonna work this one. We're just gonna pretend that's not there. <laughs> Sorry, folks, if you want to see how this is going to go, we're going to have to fight the products, not the, not what's happening. I apologize. I have, we're just trying to get everything going at the right time, and it doesn't want to work that way all the, easy all the time. So, but like I said, this is why you want the product to cure for an hour, because when you lay the stencil on and you pull the foil off or you pull a stencil off, you can go right down to the surface if your foil is not properly cured. So... I completely, I own that I did that. I'm actually glad it happened because now I can explain to you, now you understand exactly why that was an issue. All right, so I'm gonna put this, now I'm gonna shift the stencil. And what I'm doing here is lining it up with the other patterns to make sure I'm in the right place. And I don't always get it right the first time. So sometimes I gotta come up here and see where I'm missing my pattern because it doesn't want to quite line up the way it should. And really that's where it should line up. So why am I doing, did I flip it up? No, I got the crappy paint. You all have seen me do this before. I can struggle with placing a stencil the right way because I don't, I hate doing this and I hate having it come out wrong. It's very frustrating to me. There's that one. So there we're gonna lay that on there. I'm gonna pick a little more foil. And I cannot guarantee as I do this that I will not pull up more paint. You know we rushed this. This is why you don't rush things like this. Except when you're me and you make mistakes, but at least you all get to see the mistakes so you understand why you don't do certain things. All right, there's a little bit. Of... This is actually a very good teaching lesson for you all to learn why you you do all the drive times that are recommended because you have things like this happen. <laughs> it's 
Not my most attractive moment when things go really south on me. Now I gotta figure out where this little shape is. Because that came off of there. Oh, I don't think that's a little shape. I think that's actually where I accidentally rubbed something that shouldn't be there. So I can place this here. It lines up with that. And then I'm gonna tap that down. Now, if I do not answer your questions, it's because I can't see them from where I'm sitting right now, but I will go back into this at the end. I will happily answer any questions, give you any tips and any technique product questions you have, uh, any resources that you need for things that you can't get directly even easily from Jennifer or from me. I'm just here. I'm, I'm like, you know, a Google of paint crap. <laughs> for, oh God, that wasn't a nice way to phrase that, but you all know what I mean. I just, I just happen to have a lot of stuff stored in my brain, a lot of resources, a lot of information on why things work, why things don't work. Um, I've kind of made a point over the years of trying to understand the chemistry of why things don't work, because that helps me understand my failures better. Um, you know, materials that don't like each other. I'm gonna put that a little bit down there. All right, let's see if we can get this off this time without pulling up the entire paint along with it. It wants to grab the paint that's already on the back of here and it's gonna give me the problem in the same spot. Mm, don't pull it, don't pull it, don't pull it all off. Oh, now it's pulling the paint off the stencil, great. So we're gonna have some interesting stuff happening here. And this is why you do what, do what I say, not what I do. The infamous words, do what I say, not what I do. My mother used to say that to me while she lit up a cigarette. Ah, <laughs> oh, those, those days of let me smoke and drink some more so I stay thin. No, it's all good for me, it's all fine. I don't know how many of you grew up in that kind of household. My, I grew up in a household where you can be too rich, too thin, drink too much, or smoke too many thick cigarettes. <laughs> Not me personally, but that was that was the, the life I had with my mother. <laughs> she, was, she was a character, which explains a great deal about me. So anybody have any questions? I'm kind of uh, peeking at things. I don't see a lot of questions. Obviously we're not doing anything that's um, at this point beyond understanding. Okay, let's get all of this stuff up in here. And you just move your foil around, to fill in the, the open spots. little more to do in a couple spots. And let's get things where they should be so that I can get the rest of this in. Well, let me do these things first. easy once you get a couple of these in because then you you're not just lining up with the registration marks you're lining up with the whole pattern but I like I want to make sure my pattern and design is completely covering the whole surface end to end I don't want any missing spots because that kind of dis makes a disappointing result in the long run. All right, I think I got all of that. Now I just have to go in and get the, the parts that I missed up top. So now I'm just gonna go in and 
figure this one out because I now I've, I've the challenge right now is that I've now completely filled every spot and it's a little harder to find um, what I haven't filled in because I kind of familiar my brain is a little familiar with some most of the shapes but then I have to reposition and figure out where the things are that aren't always easy. It's easy to, for me to match from the top. It's not always easy for me to match from the bottom, and I'm going to have to match from the bottom on a bunch of this. And I'm really using up as much of the foil as I can. Since this is not a pattern foil, I can just constantly shift around and get any last bits of foil that I need. And this release is so good with this adhesive. I don't get this kind of release with any other product. I mean, the level and the quality of this release is indescribable. It's so good. Okay, now let's see if I can find that little, the little spot that I got to hook up into here. And that's where we go. This takes a little practice. I mean, if I can, after all these years of matching stencils and put, I still struggle to get my stencil placed the right way a couple times because it's really easy to think you've got it right and then you're like oh crap that didn't line up as well as i thought it did so it just takes a little practice and there's a little piece of foil stuff right here i'll have to get something sharp and pop that off in a minute okay let's get all of this managed There we go. Is that one? The other one that's in the heater already uh, will come out a little differently because we aren't we haven't challenged uh, the adhesive on it the way we did with the black one by pulling it out of the heater so fast. Alrighty, and this is the last little bit of it over here. And then that is a sticky corner, so I'm not sure how that's gonna come out. So when you get a kit, you'll get a couple of feet of different foils to create the pattern. You'll get some glitter that you'll see later. For a tile kit, you'll get some epoxy because we want you to have some really good fun with doing these things. And I think I got a little bit right there to catch. the littlest bit of pattern right down there. Okay, when I stop talking, it's when I, the moments I forget that I'm on a live and I'm just worrying about getting the project done. So there we go, we got the whole thing done. Yes, we have this gaping hole here. It is what it is. We're gonna work around it today. This is just, this is a demo, so you learned why you don't do what I did, which was use the epoxy too fast. Okay, so now we've got already got this killer tiger pattern on here. And that on its own could just, you could just pour the epoxy on that and leave it as it is, and that would be great. But we're gonna use our copper foil. This is cracked copper, we're gonna use that. Now, if you look at the kit, it seems like I'm not sending you that much foil. I'm sending you two square feet. But if you realize that six feet, uh, six inches by 18 inches is one square foot. So you're gonna get two square feet of foil and that's more than enough to cover an entire tile. 
So I'm going to take this foil, and you can see foil has a pretty side and a not so pretty side. Not so pretty side goes to the surface, sticky surface. If you if I didn't make that clear before, which I probably didn't, knowing me. All right, so I'm rubbing this with my hand first. I'm gonna hit it with the tile. If I needed to, I have a heavier duty scrubber. I can use, where did my other scrub brush go? Depends on the surface. So I've got a kind of ridgy surface. I'll use this one, it's super stiff. For a smoother surface like this, I'm using a softer scrub brush. Uh, anybody can find the old, good old fashioned black scrub brushes with the gray and black bristles. Those are the best because they're stiff, but they're fine bristled. They're not like this one, which is stiff with these kind of weird curly bristles and they can be a little aggressive. So I'm gonna pull that on there. Oh, wow, that looks very cool. Um, these spots here that we're not getting a lot of pattern, that's cause I, that's where we had issues with the paint pulling back up off of the foil. So we're gonna put that on here. Get my adhesive or my scrub brush. Yeah, that's a nice pattern release. And you can see how well it's releasing on the back. I mean, it's just taking all of that off and it's perfect. So now you can see our tiger pattern with the copper background. Oh my gosh, Paula, you have me on your big screen. I don't wanna see me that big, God bless you. <laughs> so look at how that look gorgeous, that copper looks over the blue. And so, you know, again, ignore the holes because I did exactly what I told you would happen if you did it too soon. The paint wasn't, uh, the, the adhesive hadn't cured long enough, and sure enough, it bonded to the paint, so when we pulled the stencil off, it ripped everything off. That's why you want your foil adhesive to dry for a little while. Maybe I should pull that little piece of extra foil off of there. Thank you. So now I've got this pattern released, and this is really, really the cool part. Okay, um, I need to put this on a container or on a rack, give me a sec. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into epoxy. Um, I'm not gonna work on the pink tile right now. I think it's uh, probably should just let it dry a little more. I don't trust that new paint. If we had trouble with this product, product ripping back because I pushed it too hard, then we're gonna have problems with other stuff. I'm gonna angle that. So now we've got this up here. We're going to use our two-part epoxy. Now I gotta grab a couple containers and some gloves. We don't do this without gloves. Tor, when you get a minute, will you go under there and grab my blue torch? Okay, we've got the cups and gloves. Thanks, kiddo, if you just set it there. So, and would you go up there and grab me uh, some of the ice blue uh, glitter or sec that shelf there? And it's actually right, if you look up in front of you, I'm sorry, I'm directing my son to find the glitter. Look right in front of you. There is a jar that says Artistic Painting Studio Artsyville. It's got light blue glitter in it. Thank you. Okay, so there's a couple ways to play with things, but I like to play with my epoxy and then mix glitter into it and then pour it because it's fun. All right, so this is the liquid glass two-part epoxy. You can see I've got my tile there, but I'm gonna set it to the side so we can mix some of this. And these are one-to-one -one coatings. So it says mix one part resin to one part hardener uh, in a clear container, mix thoroughly for two minutes over the surface you wish to coat. So we're gonna try this a new product for me. 
I'm excited about it because uh, I'm always looking for great products to carry and I'm gonna pour in, eh, I guess a little over an ounce. It should take two ounces to cover this so I'm pouring a little over an ounce in each container. Um, if you are not a good um, measure, if you're not good at eyeballing, measure. Measure, measure, measure. I am always eyeballing because I've been doing this for a long time, so I have a really good idea of where I'm at with this. Okay, and one of these is a little softer or more liquid than the other. So, and I will tell you which one it is in a second. This is the resin. The resin's a little thicker than the um, hardener. So you pour the thicker product into the thinner. Why? Because it's easier to mix that way. And this is pretty darn low odor. Um, I've had some two-part epoxies that are super stinky. This one's pretty low odor. So that in itself makes me very happy. And this is actually casting resin. You can cast um, jewelry or uh, things like that. Little, If you have um, silicone molds from like making cakes, you can cast resin into those silicone molds and make embellishments for furniture or art pieces or crafts or whatever you like. And this is a good product for that. I actually did make a point of reading to see if it could be done. And I'm really scraping every last bit out because this is super thick. And if I don't get all the as much out as I humanly can, I'm not going to get a good hard resin. If and and resin is one of these things that if you don't do it the way it wants to be done, you're going to fail your project. Meaning that if you get too much hardener in and not enough resin, the hardener will make your epoxy very brittle and it'll start setting up much faster. If you get too much resin and not enough hardener, your, your epoxy never hardens. It stays sticky and kind of gummy in spots. So measuring and scraping and cleaning out your containers is really important. I could have done this with a couple plastic shot glasses, which I normally do, but it's easier for you to see on camera if I do it in this kind of a container. So oh, I'm gonna have way more than I need. So I'm stirring, 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 aggressively. Um, some people like to stir their epoxy more gently because then they think it gives them less bubbles. I don't buy that. I want to stir aggressively so the whole thing is really well mixed because I'm going to handle the bubbles later. Bubbles aren't an issue. Okay, so I'm going to stir. And then with most epoxies, once the bubbles start flying, that's when you go. I haven't seen bubbles in this, so it may be a solid issue of mixing just straight stirring uh, on this. The open time. Pot time for most um, two-part epoxies is about 30 to 45 minutes max. If you want it to, the, the longer you need it to be open, the lower and flatter the container you should be mixing it in. Because when you get it into small containers and it gets deep, it creates heat. The heat starts the curing and you'll find that you'll pour and there'll be a big solid blob in the center. And that's not gonna be helpful to you. Um, whereas if you spread it out low, it stays liquid longer and it'll level itself. I'm going to see if I got any more in here to scrape out because I'm a, I'm a very thorough scraper. I don't like to waste things. Okay. So I've already got this pretty darn well mixed up. But I don't want to just pour a boring old a clear epoxy. No. I'm going to take a little glitter. I could make this super glittery or I could make it mildly glittery. I think right now, considering <laughs> I've already scrapped this up once, I might make it mildly glittery. And I'm going to stir my glitter in. 
Um, now this is my first time using this with Jennifer's glitter with this particular epoxy. Um, you always want to test this first, and I should, probably would have been smarter by pouring some of this out and mixing it in, but it's working fine because some of these colored glitters, they're coated with a, it's something that can dissolve in certain epoxies. This one, I don't seem to see that being an issue. I just see the glitter suspended, and that's what I'm looking at, is to see if the glitter is suspended in it or if it's starting to change the color of the epoxy. Even if it changed it right now, that wouldn't be a tip problem for me because I like things like that when it happens. But if it takes the coating off the glitter, you have then silvery glitter with a bluish tint as opposed to blue glitter. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the epoxy and I'm just gonna pour it all over the surface here. And then I'm gonna take something to spread it. Now, you can use a foam brush, you can use a paintbrush, although I don't recommend it because it's a waste of a paintbrush, or you can use a hotel room key or an old expired credit card or something, you know, an old debit card, anything. And then you're gonna move it across the surface. Now, if you don't want it to spill across the edges, tape off your edges and then you'll have the edge. But if you want it on the edges, then stick your finger in it and make sure you get the edge of this so it flows over the edge ease, evenly because if you don't do this, you might have some just big old drips of epoxy going down the sides and then some flat painted spots. So I want it going over the sides, so I'm sticking my fingers in. This is pouring nicely, it feels good. And these are just um, U-line nitrile gloves that I got when I order online. I order them in bags of 500, so I have lots of them. I think I probably have like 1,500 gloves here in the studio right now because I go through so many pairs. So I'm gonna just move this around. Oh, I like, I love playing with epoxy. Epoxy used to scare me because I didn't understand it. Then I took some time to really work on understanding how it levels and how it works and what's successful with it and what's not. Um, and I'm really pleased with how things have come out with it. What I've, where I have evolved with this. And you know, you can pigment epoxy. I have personally carried a line of epoxy pigments that will go with this product, no problem, because they work in every epoxy. But look how fun this is. Oh, this is so cute. Okay, so now I've got my epoxy spread around. And as you can tell, I'm not that worried. I'm sticking my fingers in the stuff. This is pretty easy to work with. And I, it'll, uh, the good thing about epoxy is it really self levels. So when I go in like this and I create finger trails, it'll all just smooth out. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, <laughs> take my glove off. So I don't ruin the tool I'm about to use. And you're gonna take a blowtorch. Now, I get my blow torches at Home Depot. They're not expensive, refill cans. But if, some, if something this big is intimidating to you, use the creme brulee torches that they sell in restaurant places and you refill them with like a butane lighter spray can. Hi, Deborah. nice to see you. And Lisa and Rhonda, I appreciate everybody popping in to see this. All right, so we're gonna do, click on here. What I'm doing is I'm just torching lightly over the surface, and that the uh, the heat liquefies the epoxy really thin, helps it to level out, and then it also raises the bubbles and causes them pop. So when you hit a torch over this, and I prefer a torch to a heat gun. I find the heat gun gets too hot and doesn't pop as many bubbles. So a torch, the the issues with carbon monoxide work better with it. Um, so I just take this and then you, when you do this, it sizzles across the surface like a steak. It's very cool. So you see all those bubbles popping. It's almost like it's um, fizzing like soda. So we just set this one aside and it will dry 
and cure hard. And let me turn this back up here. All right, I think, I think that's done because I don't trust that pink tile. I'd love to have gone back and shown you the other pattern and idea I had with it. I don't trust that. It's still too freshly applied. You saw what happened with this tile. When you put the adhesive on and you don't let it dry enough, it can rip everything back off. It's, that's what you don't want to have happen. I'm glad it happened so you can see why we, we tell you not to do that. All right, everybody, please sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Help promote Jennifer, help promote me. I appreciate it. Um, do not hesitate to ask questions. If I haven't answered a question that you've posted, know that I will go back through this, read them and answer them. And uh, if you have any questions you're not comfortable with asking in the group, I understand that, just PM me or PM Jennifer and we'll answer you. And you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Talk to you soon, bye.